All right, today I'm gonna give you guys a detailed look at this King Arts figure, and it is Mark One from the Iron Man line, one nine, one nine scale diecast figure series. Mm, right here, King Arts, and uh, there's the box. And then uh, the side, nothing, and then on the back shows a picture of Mark One right there. And here we have Mark 1 outside of packaging, and uh, let's check out his accessories. He doesn't come with much. Uh, we got a couple of hands, and that's it. Right there, a pair of hands, and then another pair. And then it uh, comes with this base. It says Iron Man Mark 3, I mean Iron Man 3 Mark 1. And the base actually lights up. And then uh, it also comes with this little bendy wire. It's a tiny one, and then a clamp for you to clamp onto the figure. So let's get a good look at Mark One from the front. I've been waiting for this guy uh, quite a while now. Uh, it's my favorite Iron Man suit, and I'm happy to have this in my collection. Uh, I don't plan on buying a lot of the oh, one ninth scale. Uh, there are only two, uh, actually three. That I bought, uh, which is uh, Mark Three, Mark One, and the Iron Monger. Uh, those are the only three I am getting, and I am very happy with all three of those. Well, this one, there are some uh, minor gripes I have uh, with this figure. Uh, this is a diecast piece, but uh, there are um, actually not a whole lot of diecast pieces on this figure. So let me give you a close-up look. At the armor. Here you can see the eyes are all blacked out uh, because there's no Stark head inside. Instead you just get a um, helmet with a black colored shape inside which is uh, which means that uh, this mask uh, cannot be opened. And, uh, there it is. Paint job is nice. Uh, I like it. Not as good as Hot Toys, but uh, still pretty decent. The welding, yeah, it's not as good as Hot Toys, but uh, yeah, it's all right. And uh, he is uh, there is a body underneath, a human humanoid body with a uh, a velvet no a um, with a uh, sway type um, outfit on. A brown suede outfit. This guy's wearing, yeah, you can clearly see it from the top here. And then here's the back side of him. It would have been nice if uh, this thing actually rotates, spins around, that would have been nice, but it doesn't. The only feature this figure has is the light up uh, art reactor. That's the only thing. Get a good look at the rest of them, and uh, the gauntlet here is made out of die cast, and then uh, this body piece, the the bottom section, is made out of die cast, and then the back side is also made out of die cast. This piece all the way back here, it's made out of die cast, and then I believe, um, oh, the back here, the calf piece, this a uh, tan color calf piece, is made out of die cast, and I think that's about it. There are uh, not a whole lot of uh, diecast pieces, this figure, but uh, it does have a lot of intricate detailing. You can see it back here, quite nice. And then uh, the battery compartment, it's right here. Same with, uh, same as uh, Hot Toys. And this thing is held together uh, by magnets. And then there's a there's a tiny tiny switch right above uh, the battery battery pack. And then uh, once you flip that switch, and you get a really, really bright LED light. It's so bright. Uh, yeah, let's get a good look at him. Yeah, with the welding, not perfect. But uh, for what it is and the size, I think it's quite nice. Price is high though. This thing costs uh, $199, and I believe the original Mark I costs less than that. And it's a 1/6 scale. This one is a 1/9 scale. 
the way back to the front so you guys can see him a little bit more. He's got articulation, but uh, it is somewhat limited by the armor. Understandable, because uh, this is the bulky armor and uh, uh, he is quite restricted even in the film. A lot of wires running through, that's nice. I really like that. Let me rotate him a little bit so you guys can see this leg. Some wires running through it. Makes me want to watch um, Iron Man uh, movie 1 again. And I might just do that. And as far as uh, raising his arm, he could only go up about that much because uh, it is hindered by the, uh, the shoulder pad there. And then uh, it has full range of motion, uh, full forward and back motion and then the elbow can bend at about almost 90 degrees the same here on the side and uh, there's that um, over on the forearm there's a compartment that opens up and here you can see it's just a hinge joint and it is held on by a magnet you can see a little magnet up the top and a little magnet down there kind of and uh, the hand guard uh, the hand guard uh, can move a little bit forward, not a whole lot. Same with this side, it's just barely, very minimal movement. And, uh, uh, waist, there's movement, but again, it is hindered by um, this armor. Uh, mainly these two pieces right here. Uh, this piece right here is hindering uh, the articulation for the waist. And then same on this side, that piece. And here you can see, if you really want, he uh, throw his arm up uh, quite a bit. I mean, not over the head, but uh, still, it's a good good amount of uh, range. And then the hips are a little more hindering. Uh, there are a lot more hindrance uh, with the, the hips here, uh, especially with this tread uh, by the side of his thigh. Uh, you can see right now is touching the hips there. And that's about how far his legs could spread because of that. Uh, I know it's it's accurate, but uh, it would have been nice if they were a little further out, maybe, or something. I'm not sure what they could have done uh, to give him a little more range, uh, so he could spread his legs a little further apart. And here you can see his leg could barely move forward and uh, back. It's a little bit, but you can see that piece of uh, plastic is uh, knocking the front of uh, the hips there. Uh, crotch area and uh, that's about how far his legs could move forward. Uh, the knees he could bend about 90 degrees and then ankles are actually on the ball joint but uh, again there's not a whole lot of uh, range you could give him. Uh, I'm kind of surprised you could give him almost 90 degrees for the for the for the knees. Same with this side. All right and here I have the two Mark 1s. The original um, Hot Toys Mark 1 and the King Arts um, 1 9th scale Mark 1 and as you can see here the Hot Toys is a lot taller um, let me get a ruler so you guys can see how tall he actually is so at the end of the day is this guy worth getting um, I'm a little biased because I am a huge fan of Mark 1 so I would say definitely a purchase but uh, for some people might not be uh, if they aren't a huge fan of Iron Man Mark 1 suit then it might not be for you. Um, if you're a Hot Toys fan, then I would uh, definitely hold out for the diecast version of this guy because uh, they're definitely making them because they're making all the other ones in diecast. So I don't see why they wouldn't make this one in diecast. So yeah, but um, if you want this scale, this is a nice scale, a uh, one nine scale. Uh, it goes great on your shelf because uh, it's about nine inches in height. So you definitely have room for other stuff. Uh, but yeah, um, if you're a huge fan, definitely get it. If not, then hold out for the Hot Toys version. So yeah, there you go. There's the King Arts Iron Man Mark 1. Uh, thanks for watching.